Welcome to my new series of ACE, the Technical Pilot Interview Summaries. In this series, I will give you the most important parts of each chapter in this book, ignoring the points which are too easy and basic, and correcting some of the mistakes that the book has made. I will also be uploading PDF summaries of each of the chapters in the respective video descriptions. Please subscribe for more aviation content, including lessons using Flight Simulator. First video. Chapters 1 and 2, Aerodynamics and Engines Maximum glide range is achieved at VMD, velocity of minimum drag. The mean aerodynamic cord, MAC, shown in yellow, is the average cord length of an airfoil. It, e it is used in larger aircraft during center of gravity calculations, where CG is expressed as a percentage of the MAC starting from the leading edge. Not to be confused with the main camber line, which is a line from the leading to trailing edges, equidistant from the top and bottom surfaces of the wing. Washout on a wing is a decrease of the angle of incidence from the root to the tip. It compensates for the early wing tip stall due to higher loading in that region by maintaining the angle of attack lower at the wing tips. Center of pressure is a theoretical point through which the sum of the lifting force acts along the cord line of a wing. As angle of attack increases, the center of pressure moves towards the leading edge. Direct lift control is a system through which wing spoilers are used to dump lift during an instrument approach in order to maintain the glide slope. Drag can be broken down between profile and induced drag. Profile drag is made up of form, friction, and interference drag. Induced drag is drag created as a byproduct of lift. The more lift being generated, the higher the angle of attack, and the more a wing will generate induced drag as a byproduct of the lift it is generating. Straight-winged piston aircraft have a steeper increase in profile drag with speed, as their wings are not designed for it. There is also a steeper increase in induced drag, and therefore total drag, below VMD. Remember having to apply a lot of power to maintain slow flight during training. The drag curve of a jet is noticeably flatter than that of its piston counterpart. VMD is typically higher on a jet aircraft because the swept wing is more efficient against profile drag. Vortex generators energize the boundary layer and helps keep it attached to the wing surface. This helps prevent stall at low speeds and increase control surface effectiveness. Center of gravity is forward limited so that the plane is not nose heavy. This can decrease the flare rate and cause high stick forces. Forward center of gravity also increases the amount of tail down force to be generated by the tailplane. This tail down force causes increased drag and thus decreased performance and efficiency. The effective weight increase generated by this tail down force increases stall speed. Trimming for this increased tail down force requirement results in a decreased range of motion and less range during the rotation or the flare. The aircraft is effectively heavier, less responsive and requires more stick force. A center of gravity beyond the aft limit results in a short tailplane moment measured from the center of gravity to the tailplane's center of pressure. In this situation, the aircraft will be longitudinally unstable and low required stick forces will leave the aircraft prone to self-overstressing. There will be less induced drag on the tailplane which decreases the required wing angle of attack. This increases range and high speed performance. However, a high speed restriction may be introduced. A tailplane trimmed for a far aft center of gravity may not be able to produce the nose down forces required to maintain a steady angle of attack at high cruise speeds. An aft center of gravity, which is still within limits, is beneficial 
It produces a lighter and more responsive aircraft, which costs less to operate. In order to control its stronger momentum, a heavier aircraft will have a further top of descent for a shallower descent gradient requirement. A swept wing has a higher critical Mach due to the division of flow over the wing between the increased spanwise compared to cordwise flow. A swept wing produces less lift and is therefore less sensitive to turbulence. A swept wing stalls at the tip first. During the stall, there is a forward and inward movement of the center of pressure. Reaching critical Mach, shockwaves increase drag and create a shift from a stick push to a stick pull force required to maintain level flight. A nose down effect called Mach tuck, passing critical Mach, there is a rearward shift in center of pressure. Speed margin of a jet aircraft is more significant due to the overspeed tendencies at low altitude of jet aircraft because of its huge power. Mach number is a ratio of true airspeed to the local speed of sound. Increased camber and wing washout help to delay the stall. Wing slots are the main feature to serve this purpose. They re-energize the boundary layer, which increases the coefficient of lift, therefore delaying the stall. At very high altitudes, Mach compressibility disturbs pressure and increases the effective weight on the wing. The equivalent airspeed stall speed will therefore be higher. Compressibility error that is corrected during the conversion from indicated to equivalent airspeed means that the Indicated stall speed will be higher at higher altitudes due to the Mach effect. Dutch roll, aka oscillatory stability, is a combination of slight yaws developing into slight rolls. It is caused by swept wings. Although the source of Dutch roll is the yaw, the correction for it, assuming that the yaw damper is inoperative, is to apply opposite aileron because it is practically impossible to time the application of rudder yaw against Dutch roll. It is more useful for an aircraft to be spirally unstable than to suffer from Dutch roll. A spiral instability can easily be corrected by opposite aileron. Stability is the ability of an aircraft to return to a previous condition following a disturbance assuming there has been no configuration or power changes. Directional stability means returning to a heading after a yaw force. Spiral stability is a return to wings level after aileron has been released in a coordinated turn. Lateral stability is the return to level flight after a roll force has been removed. Longitudinal stability is the return to straight flight after a pitch force has been removed. A statically stable aircraft will return to its original attitude following a disturbance. If in this process it oscillates with decreasing amplitude, it is also dynamically stabled. If there is a divergent oscillation, the aircraft may be statically stable, but dynamically unstable. Static stability, therefore, is the immediate reaction of the airframe following a disturbance, and dynamic stability is the reaction of the airframe over time. It can either be positive, neutral, or negative in all types of stability. Aerodynamic damping forces decrease with altitude, so at higher altitudes, dynamic stabilities will be reduced except for st spiral stability, which increases at high altitudes. Spiral stability always opposes oscillatory stability, which means Dutch roll. Dutch roll, therefore, increases with altitude. At very high speeds, usually outside the normal operating range, applying rudder can cause a rolling force. This is called yaw-induced adverse rolling motion. It is caused by 
the fact that the rudder is not central to the rolling axis of the aircraft, and thus it would act like a wing with aileron diffraction to cause the roll. Spoilers can be used to control roll. This is because they disrupt the airflow and decrease the lift in that portion of the wing. This is useful at high speeds where increased spanwise flow decreases aileron efficiency. They also cause drag when they are used as speed brakes. Series yaw dampers do not affect pedal movement, so they can be used in modern aircraft during takeoffs and landings as they do not increase the pedal forces required by the pilot. Variable incidence tailplanes are used in modern jet aircraft to allow for a large speed range and shifting center of gravity is due to fuel burn during the flight. If this system becomes stuck, stick forces will increase and the aircraft will be less responsive. Moving passengers, and therefore the center of gravity, backwards ameliorates this condition. If this happens, land at the nearest alternate airport to avoid diversions from the trimmed condition due to center of gravity shift by the fuel burn. Moving the CG backwards will also decrease the force required during landing at the flare stage. Use a reduced flap setting for landing to reduce the forces required. Plan a long approach to give time to control during configuration changes. A runaway stabilizer will max out at its top or bottom stop. If this happens, the control column must be gripped firmly, autopilot disengaged, trim switches to the cutout position, and the manual grasp on the trim wheel. Manual trim is to be used for the remainder of the flight. If there is a reduction in elevator feel, it can be easy to overstress the airframe. In this condition, shifting the center of gravity forward can re help to return some of the stick force for safer flying. Balance tabs are a mini aileron on an aileron or other control surface used to reduce the stick force. They serve the same purpose as a horn or a mass balance. Q-Feel is a computerized system that uses dynamic pressure as in indicated airspeed, to simulate natural stick forces on a fly-by-wire aircraft, meaning an aircraft which uses powered control surfaces. Bernoulli's theorem is that the total energy of a moving fluid, or gas, is made up of three forms of energy, potential, pressure, and kinetic. Pressure energy can also be thought of as temperature. When thinking about air, potential energy can be ignored. It can be said that the kinetic plus pressure energy of air is always constant. So, if the kinetic energy increases, temperature and pressure will drop proportionally. This is the concept used in Venturi ducts, where pressure and temperature drop as airflow accelerates in the throat. This is the cause of carburetor icing at temperatures above freezing. The reciprocating internal combustion engine cycle is induction, compression, combustion, exhaust. Compression ratio is the total volume divided by the clearance volume of the cylinder. Propeller aircraft have good slow speed recovery because engine output is very responsive to throttle movements. Propeller slipstream also prevents the stall and makes the fin more effective. Propeller blades are twisted to maintain constant angle of attack. Keep in mind that the angle of attack changes because of faster blade speeds towards the tip, increasing the disc parallel component of relative air. Propeller efficiency is the propeller thrust divided by brake horsepower. Thrust force is the air mass times the velocity. A variable pitch propeller is used to maintain optimal blade angle throughout different regimes of flight. 
turboprops are used for regional operations because they are suited to medium altitudes. Unlike jet engines, which are most efficient at high altitudes, turboprop straight wings allow them to have suitable takeoff performance for restrictive or smaller airfields. There are some regional jets being built right now, which can rival this medium altitude competitiveness. A multi engine aircraft with counterclockwise rotating engines, when viewed from the front, will have engine one as its critical engine due to engine one providing a slipstream on the fin, which aids directional control in case of an engine two failure. This slipstream is not present if there is an engine one failure. Because of this, a higher critical speed is required to maintain rudder efficiency. Thrust line of a propeller disc will always be positioned closer to the downgoing blade. Engine one therefore has a thrust line closer to the aircraft center line and provides a lower yawing moment. Engine one is a critical engine due to this factor because in its failure, the yaw moment from engine two is much greater. Crosswind is an important factor during one engine in operative situations. Wind can hit the tailplane and provide some of the balancing force that is lost. For example, if critical engine, engine 1, is failed, wind from the right causes a nose right yaw moment, which counteracts the thrust imbalance yaw. Specific fuel consumption equals pounds of fuel burn per hour divided by pounds of engine thrust. A jet engine, in its simplest form, has a diverging intake which decelerates and thus increases pressure energy. A combustion chamber and a convergent exit which further accelerates the combustion expanded air mass. This design requires external forward motion to bring air into the inlet for it to start working. To overcome this, a turbine driven compressor was added creating the gas turbine engine. The layout of compression, combustion, turbine, exhaust ensures the combustion cycle occurs at a constant pressure within the combustion chamber. Maximum takeoff thrust is expressed as an N1 or engine pressure ratio figure, mainly to be used for 5 minutes or 10 minutes if one engine is inoperative. Compressor ratio is a measure of the change in air pressure between the inlet and outlet of either an entire engine or a particular compressor stage. If compressor stages are placed in series, the compression ratio accumulates. For example, if stage 1 has a ratio of 4 to 1 and stage 2 has a ratio of 3 to 1, the overall compression ratio will be 12 to 1. Bypass is the separation of inlet flow after the first compression stage between core air and bypass air. In a bypass engine, the bypass air is mixed with the core air at the exhaust stage. In a high bypass or fan engine, the bypass air is not mixed within the engine housing. Bypass ratio in a fan engine considers the air mass which passed through the first stage and what ratio of that slightly compressed air went into bypass compared to how much of it went into the core. A triple spool engine simply has three hollow shafts with compressor on one end and turbine in the other. In this engine type, the low pressure first compressor stage is not connected to any compressor or turbine stage other than its own. This allows for there to be a very large fan which acts like a shrouded propeller which ends up generating up to 75% or more of the total thrust. Triple spool engines can have each stage operating closer to their optimal velocities, are easier to start as only one stage needs to be spun for this purpose, are more efficient due to the large fan and are easier to maintain because they are modular. An engine is flat rated to guarantee constant thrust values for any given throttle lever position. Above a certain temperature, this guarantee can no longer be maintained as the engine will need to be used 
at reduced thrust in order to control the core temperatures. Bypass engines are most efficient at high altitudes where low density allows compressors to operate at high RPMs, resulting in optimum gas flow and therefore optimum fuel consumption. At these altitudes, despite operating at 90-95% to 95 RPM, thrust is low enough to equal required cruise thrust, and the aircraft is high enough for this to coincide with the minimum drag speeds. Flying at high altitude gives best specific fuel consumption and therefore endurance, time airborne, as well as higher true airspeed for a given indicated airspeed, which increases maximum range. If a jet engine thrust lever has a 10 inch range of motion, at the top of this range, a 1 inch movement of the lever will correspond to a greater thrust increase than a 1 inch movement at the lower end. This is because jet engines are designed to perform at high RPMs, with thrust increasing non-linearly in relation to the throttle lever. Turbine engine start errors and their cause. Wet start is the failure of an engine to start after fuel has been delivered to the combustion chamber. This is caused by an ignition problem. The identifying symptoms are that exhaust gas temperature does not rise, RPMs stabilize at the starter maximum, as the starter is what is rotating the engine. To deal with it, close the fuel lever, keep monitoring over the engine to clear the unspent fuel. Hung start. Engine starts but does not reach self-sustaining RPMs. This is usually caused by insufficient airflow due to low density. Can also be caused by low starter RPMs or insufficient compression. It is identified by high exhaust gas temperatures and RPMs below the self-sustaining speed. To deal with it, close the fuel lever, keep monitoring over the engine to clear the unspent fuel, increase inlet airflow will be needed to have a proper start under these conditions. Hot start. The engine starts and sustains, but combustion is unstable. Can be caused by overfueling, intake or exhaust blockage, high tailwind, or a seized engine due to things like ice buildup. It's identified by exhaust gas temperature quickly rising past its maximum limit. Close the fuel lever before max exhaust gas temperature is reached. When RPMs drop to re-engagement speed, motor the engine to clear the unspent fuel. Flex takeoffs use a reduced thrust that provides roughly the same performance as that which would be attained at a performance limited maximum takeoff weight and full thrust. This reduced thrust, therefore, reduces exhaust gas temperature and prolongs the engine life and reduces noise. Flex takeoff, aka assumed temperature or D rating on a Boeing, use a temperature input into the full authority digital engine control to trick the engine into reducing takeoff power. It increases V1 and VR and V2. It reduces engine wear but maintains the safety fact that the takeoff go around switch can still be used in case of an emergency. Flex takeoffs shouldn't be used on icy runways or when the reverse thrust or anti skid systems are inoperative, or when increased V2 procedures are in use in order to improve the obstacle limited takeoff weight. Engine pressure ratio needs to be attained by 40 or 80 knots during the takeoff roll in order to ensure that the pilot is not distracted chasing the EPR reading during the takeoff and can then be attentive to other, more important areas. This also ensures adequate takeoff and climb performance. Compressor stall happens during engine operation outside normal flight attitudes. This can be caused by severe turbulence or by unusual flight conditions. Compressor stall can be identified by ter total gas temperatures increasing as well as engine vibration and RPM fluctuation. An engine surge is when there is a reversal in the airflow through the engine, causing combustion chamber gases to be expelled through the front end of the engine. It produces a loud bang 
excess total gas temperatures, and loss of thrust. A surge is caused when all stages are stalled or when an excessive fuel flow causes high pressure in the rear of the engine and the compressor pressure is not enough to balance this. So, the airflow breaks down and reverses. In this case, close the throttles smoothly, adjust attitude to unstall the engine, and smoothly reapply thrust. Turbine engines have bleed valves to regulate the airflow pressures at different stages of the engine, preventing stalls and surges, but also to provide systems such as the EFIS with cooling, engine cooling of the gearbox or generator, as well as compressed air for auxiliary systems such as AC and pressurization. Jet A1 has a specific gravity of 0.8 at 15 degrees Celsius, medium flash point and a wax point of negative 50 degrees Celsius. Jets do not have critical engines, but there can be a critical engine failure due to the increased effects of crosswinds which were mentioned previously in this video. A typical fire detection system consists of 1. A normal minimum of 2 loops for overheat and fire detection in each unit, engine or APU, and sometimes the wheel wells. 2. Oral and visual warnings for overheat and fire conditions in any of the above. 3. Fault warning systems for all loops. 4. Two extinguisher bottles per engine and one for the APU. 5. The ability to test the bottle firing circuits. Test the fault warning systems, overheat, and fire detection systems. 6. Lavatory and cargo hold smoke detectors. 7. Indicator discs on the side of the fuselage to show whether or not the bottles have been discharged or are available for use.